So in this yeah. one of the dermis, we have these basaloid islands with a lot of um, clear spaces, kind of pseudoglandular, full of mucin. Um, this looks like a basal cell carcinoma, but the adenoid cystic subtype with those pools of mucin there. Yeah, so I, I would call this, this is an adenoid subtype of basal cell, right? And the, the big concern is that you could confuse it with adenoid cystic carcinoma, which is a salivary gland carcinoma that often arises like in the parotid and invades the nerves and can be locally pretty aggressive and bad. It rarely can occur as a skin primary, and it seems to be much more indolent in the skin. But it would, I would want complete excision for a true adenoid cystic, whereas basal cells, sometimes you just do curatage, right? And you can manage more conservatively depending on the situation. So I don't actually have a good adenoid cystic to show you. But in true adenoid cystic, the, uh, these little blue mucin-filled um, pools are very sharply rounded and circumscribed. And there are some other features and some stains that can tell it apart. Like I believe adenoid cystics are usually SOX10 positive, even though they're not melanocytic. Um, there are some uh, sweat gland and salivary gland tumors that stain with SOX10. I believe CKIT, CD117, is positive. All right, so, but the thing that helps me is it, A, basal cell carcinoma with adenoid change, what we're seeing here, is really common. Like, I see it couple, multiple times per week, you know. Um, when it's really extensive, occasionally it can confuse people and make them think about a sweat, um, a salivary gland tumor like adenoid cystic or to think about like a metastatic adenocarcinoma. So the key to me is, is ignore the mucin-filled pools and look at the other islands and see if you can find features of obvious basal cell. Like, look, mucin-rich stroma and a little bit of a cleft with mucin in it between the tumor cells and the dermis and basaloid palisading around the periphery. So once I find other features that look like classic slam dunk basal cell carcinoma, then these big mucin-filled pools are no problem at all. This is just adenoid change. And in fact, when I report this, I just say basal cell carcinoma, comma, nodular type. I don't even mention the adenoid because it's going to confuse people potentially and make them worry this is something bad, and it's not. It's just a subtype, and usually you see it in the nodular type, um, although it's possible to have also infiltrative or other components of the basal. Um, but I find that this one's pretty extensive, but usually if you look around, you'll find other areas that don't have the adenoid change, like here, that look just like, or very little of the adenoid change, but that look at that cleft in the mucin. This looks just like regular basal cell carcinoma. So I find that a helpful clue with all the different weird variations of basal cell that exist. Clear cell, granular cell, pleomorphic, all these different weird variations that don't have clinical significance, but that can confuse us microscopically. Look around and try to find other areas that look like good classic basal cell. It will make it easier to diagnose the weird areas, um, I feel like. So, and oh yeah, I forgot the main point is I forgot that the in adenoid basal cell carcinoma, the mucin pools are very irregular and unusual shapes rather than the perfectly round punched out little circles that you see in at true adenoid cystic carcinoma, basal cell carcinoma with adenoid change has these very irregular, loose kind of, you know, uh, meandering pools full of mucin. They're just very weird, unusual shapes, most of them. Sometimes they can get more rounded, but usually you'll get these big irregular ones and that's um, not not typical of adenoid cystic carcinoma in my experience, but fits nicely for adenoid basal cell carcinoma. All right, so here for contrast is an example of a true primary cutaneous adenoid cystic carcinoma. And there's a lot of different patterns going on here. You can see there's some little tiny islands, some big islands. Some of the areas have that irregular kind of blue um, mucin-filled space like we saw in the adenoid basal cell carcinoma. And I think to me the most characteristic areas are areas like this and um, that these are the very punched out kind of cookie cutter or cribriform kind of pattern of multiple small very regular sharply circumscribed holes that are punched into the middle of the basaloid appearing tumor islands and you can see you don't have the the as much of the palisading with mucin rich stroma and clefting stroma looks different than a basal cell and then like I said you can use some immunostains to help sort it out further um, in difficult situations, but I think with practice, they look quite a bit different uh, most of the time. So this is what I think of as kind of a characteristic example of a true adenoid cystic carcinoma. And I'll put a link to this uh, whole slide image um, down below so you can check it out yourself.